I do, I said, standing by Jen's side, promising till death do us part. One of the happiest moments of my life, and I almost missed it. See, just six months after returning home, I thought about ending my life to stop the pain. When I got back, man, it was good to be home. Reunited with my nephews and pepperoni pies. But eventually, the good times were harder to find. I struggled to find a place where I fit in. My life was going dark, and I was losing hope. As a medic on active duty, I was respected and I had a purpose. At home, I lost sight of what my life was about. Across the ocean, I had buddies who understood. Here, Jen tried to help, but she didn't know how. Then, late one Friday afternoon, my boss told me not to come in anymore. I lost my job again. I felt like nothing I did mattered. When Jen tried to comfort me, I pushed her away. Eventually, she just gave up and left. That was the final straw. I spiraled, feeling useless and hopeless. I started thinking seriously about ending it all. Then, that night, I ran into Will, a Navy buddy I met at the VFW. We got to talking. Me about Afghanistan, him about Nam. Our conversation took a serious turn. He told me he struggled for years with guilt and feeling hopeless. Under the weight of it all, he thought about suicide. But he learned about a new treatment called Cognitive Behavioral Therapy, or CBT, for suicide prevention, which helped turn his life around. He said it's a proven talk therapy that's helped many vets struggling with suicide. Will admitted he wasn't one for talking about his problems, but said CBT was different. Instead of just talking about stuff, he told me it focuses on teaching skills to handle thoughts that lead to suicide, and that it also helped him find new meaning in his life. At first, I didn't totally buy it. I'd been to a few counseling sessions before, and none were like what Will described. So I looked into it more. Turns out CBT for suicide prevention is backed by years of research. Mostly, I like that it cuts the chances of future suicide attempts in half. So I decided to give it a try. At my first appointment, I met my therapist, Marcy. I wasn't totally feeling it, but she seemed nice. After talking a bit, Marcy invited me to explain what had happened that led me to consider suicide. It actually felt good to get it out and have someone listen. From my story, we noticed that losing my job and Jen triggered specific thoughts, feelings, and behaviors. Marcy taught me how to look out for these as warning signs of a future crisis, and we came up with things I could do before things got too far, like distract myself from negative thoughts and not spend too much time alone. Will was right, this treatment was different, and I liked that Marcy didn't judge me. I decided to go back, and we discovered that my struggle with suicide was connected to feelings of emptiness and lack of purpose in my life. Marcy asked me to list reasons why I wanted to live. Man, that was tough. But Marcy stuck with me, and we eventually came up with some reasons. Then, I put items from my list into a hope box, so that when I started feeling down on life, I would have things to remind me why I wanted to live. Sounds weird, I know, but one night alone at home, I clutched a picture of my nephew. It actually worked. I wanted to live for that boy. Next, Marcy suggested we work together to increase meaning in my life. I needed something to be passionate about again, a new mission. So I started volunteering to teach medics in training, and I also began coaching my nephew's soccer team. The kids appreciated me. For the first time since Afghanistan, I felt valued. Over the next few weeks, we worked on my negative beliefs of being worthless and useless. I learned skills to change how I view myself. Taking control of my thoughts helped change how I feel and prevented my downward spiral. I'm glad I decided to stick with the treatment. In the final sessions, Marcy helped me prepare for tough situations. I did a mental practice of how I'd use my new skills to prevent a suicide crisis in the future.
I was proud of being able to put my new skills into action. Since treatment ended, the darkness is starting to fade. I'm feeling more <laughs> hopeful, and I'm not so hard on myself. Yeah, I still have tough times, but I can handle them better. I've started school to become an EMT, and me and Jen, we're more connected than we've been in a while. Now I'm helping her help me, instead of pushing her away. With CBT for suicide prevention, I know what I'm living for. You can too. Learn more about proven treatments and how to find help at treatmentworksforvets.com.